Hello friends and potential friends. It's been a while since I've given you an overview of my outdoor garden. Primarily because I'm pretty much ashamed of my outdoor garden. It has been a strange year for trying to grow stuff in Central Florida. We started off with a mild winter. Never did get a freeze last winter. I got a few tomatoes out of that deal. But then when spring finally came, it stayed cool for about an extra month. A month longer than we normally have around here. That got us into March. Somewhere between March and April I got all my plants in the ground. And then April we had a drought. Coupled with 90 plus degree temperatures just about every day. And everything that I had planted pretty much just stalled. Finally made it to June and started getting some rains and things started trying to grow again so it's almost like our growing season is just starting now and it's almost the end of June. So let's walk around and see what we got that still survived. There's one of my six-year-old basil plants. Next to that is an elderberry that I got a cutting from down the street and planted in here. Ooh, didn't kill the mosquitoes. There's a gardenia that I brought back from Texas. The leaves you see there have grown in the last couple of weeks. Prior to that, throughout uh, April and May, it was pretty much just a couple of sticks sticking out of the ground. There's another elderberry over there and one of our imported striped lizards. That's what the black racer wants to catch. A couple of dadal peppers down here. Bad time for avocados. Usually the cold kills them. This year the heat killed them. That's my second one. The first one's already in the compost pile. Over here Todd's Tropicals. Todd, I believe he's over near Tampa. He actually said in one of his videos what this cactus is. My wife sent this to me about four, five, six years ago. It was small enough then to fit in an envelope. She actually sent me two of them. The second one was in that pot there and the freeze two years ago killed it. Now it looks like it's being replaced with amaranth. I have no idea how those seeds got in there. Moving along down here, I've got some cuttings of rosemary that I took last, last over the winter, I think. No, I put those in the lab, keep them alive over the winter in case anything happened to the mother plant. And that's the mother plant. And she needs another haircut, but I really don't need any more rosemary cuttings. My horseradish is still hanging in there. It doesn't like me very much because I've kept it in that tiny pot for a number of years now. Got some lemongrass my buddy brought down to me and that's growing good. Over here some more basil. One poor little sugar cane I never put in the ground. A few more dadal peppers. A little more rosemary. Pineapples are still hanging in there. And in amongst all these weeds, there's a, still a fig tree that I've been saying for at least a year now needs to go in the ground somewhere. Blueberries. And this part's kind of interesting. I did a video about a month ago. I was so proud I had two ginger plants pop up. Well, they died during the drought. But now, I've noticed I've got some more starting to pop up. There's one right there. Another one over here. Another one down here. And on top of that, in the last couple of weeks, my turmeric has started popping up. Now, to be fair, I think both of these were from the second planting. Because I did plant more after the died 
my aloe over here. I've learned something about aloe. Be careful where you plant it. Because if it doesn't like where you plant it, it might just move. I put this aloe in here about three, four years ago. It was growing on the side of my house, which never gets any sun at all. So I brought it over here. This end of the bed is usually a bit more shady than the other end. So I figured it'd be happy here. I learned I was wrong. As I pan over here, I'm going about three feet until you get to that. I had no idea that aloe would send out a runner that far, but it's moving. These are my jalapeno peppers, and there are a few small peppers on it here and there. I have picked a few off of this, but again, they pretty much stopped doing anything when in April when it was so dry. Got a dadle pepper over here that's got some blossoms on it now, finally. And there's actually a couple of peppers on it. So, it looks like the season is beginning to start. My blueberry has got a lot of new growth on it. And this is all in June. So that's starting to come along. This is where I grow my sweet potato slips. Apparently I also grow grass here. Now I've pulled slips up, probably 30 to 40 slips out of this that I've got planted over in the other bed. I planted, pulled a bunch of them about two weeks ago. And I got more starting to pop up. So I may be planting even more of them before too long. Over This bed is my catch-all. Basically, if I have a plant that I don't have any place else to put it, I stick it in here. Got a few jalapenos, and they also are starting to grow some fruit. Uh, there's one squash back there starting to grow up the weeds. And then I had one potato in the house, an uh, Irish potato that started growing, so I cut it up and planted it in here. Pretty much, looks like it's pretty much died off now, but because of the heat, I'm going to leave it there. And then I've got lots more sweet potatoes that I obviously missed the last time, or the time before the last time I dug sweet potatoes. This is my purslane bed. Anytime I find purslane growing anywhere, I dig it up and put it in here. And it seems to be happy there. Now we'll swing around. And this is my pepper bed. Planted these in, I think, March. February or March. I have gotten a few peppers off of them, but for the most part, they haven't been doing much of anything. Looks like they're just now starting to put on new growth. And I see a few blossoms here and there. The ones up here in the front are sweet banana peppers. Got one little one down there. And there's one over there that's almost ready to pick. Beyond them I have bell peppers, which I've never had any luck getting bell peppers. Then I have a couple of habaneros and some Tabasco peppers at the far end. I believe I saw a blossom or two on the Tabascos when I looked earlier. Over here, until this morning this was tomatoes. I planted 13 Amish paste tomato plants in here back in uh, February or March. And I managed to get one scrawny little tomato off of them. The rest of them just kind of hung there. Never did anything. Stopped blooming. They stopped blooming during the drought. And so this morning I gave up on them and dug, pulled them up and they're in the compost pile now. But it's not a total loss. 
because I've got another sweet potato over here too. Funny thing is I've never grown sweet potatoes in this bed so I don't know where that one came from. Down at the far end was collards. I planted them last September I believe and I got quite a few cuttings off of them. You may have seen my canning recipe or video but they finally gave up the ghost so I pulled them up a week or so ago. Over here we have this is primarily dedicated to sweet potatoes but I did plant a bunch of northern beans along this side of it. I got a few beans off of it and then again during the drought they pretty much just stopped doing anything and they're just now starting to wake up again. Sweet potatoes are finally starting to grow and vine out. Oh look, I'm going to have a bean. That might be the third one I get to eat off of here. So that's the beds. I'm going to pause you for a second and we'll walk back out into the back end. Okay, this bed originally was supposed to be my squash bed. I planted about nine or ten, uh, I think it was spaghetti squash this year. Planted them back in February or March. They started getting powdery mildew and most of them died off. At least I thought they died off. So, a few weeks ago I was at a nursery and picked up this moringa. At the time it was about half as tall as it is right now. Seems to be happy in here. Then of course the squash started growing again. In fact I got squash growing way up clear out here. And I think I even saw one or two possible blossoms trying to form. So there's a chance if the powdery mildew doesn't get them. Yeah there's one. I might actually get a squash or two out of that. But I'm not going to be holding my breath. Sugarcane, doing what sugarcane does. Still have to cut off some of the last year's growth. But the big problem I have with that is I don't have any place to plant it if I do cut it. And in keeping with my line about this stuff just wants to grow. I got sugar cane growing off of sugar cane. Got my fig tree still alive, even after they dropped an oak tree on it. It's hanging in there, but of course back here it doesn't get nearly enough sunlight. And that pretty much finishes up the walk around. I mean, we could go over and look at the ponderosa lemon tree, but I'm still particularly ashamed of that because there are two lemons on it, but they're only about the size of a golf ball or a tennis ball, and normally they get bigger than a softball. That one's been struggling this year too. So let me end this for now. I'm going to walk back over there and see if I can find that black racer again. We'll see you on the next one.